what I thought was going to be a nice peaceful RPK build video turned into what might possibly be the first major villain arc on this channel. Despite that though, Russ bring automation into the game this wipe and I built the most sweat solo cave you might ever see. It literally made rockets fully automated from start to finish. Sit back, relax, and I'll show you a bit of what I mean. I woke up at 5am on Force Wipe to secure this cave, something I hadn't done in about 10 years. I got a salvage dax, killed a bear, made a furnace, made a few foundations metal for my bunker, went and hit some barrels, got a tier 2, a garage door, and then just went straight back to sleep. You're probably wondering why this is a cinematic though, it's because I forgot to turn my recording on in my complete sleep deprivation. You didn't miss much though, it was just barrel hitting simulator for about an hour. I woke up 6 hours later and got started on the first day of my wipe. Hello again guys, time for another video, this time in a cave. I uh, forgot to turn my recording on this morning though when I tried to get this cave. I wasn't on for very long, not a whole lot happened, but this is what we got so far. Time to go see who the neighbours are. Interesting, we've got a couple little starters above the cave. I have a feeling they wanted the cave too because it is right next to Arctic Research Base, but I'm probably going to be cave camp for a while. But just quickly, before we get started, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch in my off hours. The content streamed on Twitch will not be in these videos, they'll be two completely separate things. If you want to go see me get smashed on Twitch, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. Give it a follow. While you're there, follow my Twitter. It's the first time I've plugged it. Let's keep looking around. Oh no, these guys are going to be a problem. They could literally see the entrance to my cave. They're not very friendly. I hate these people, we have to censor so much of what he said in the editing. I am being door camp by them, but I have managed to sneak away to at least get some wood. I don't really have a specific layout for this base, I'm kind of just going to wing it, but it does need to be as defensible as possible because it is going to be making rockets. I can't really have an open RP core as much as I'd want, it's going to be like compartmentalised so we can actually defend it if it does get online, so we'll get to it and I'll show you as long on the build. I was having a hard time leaving my cave base, the clan down in the water were door camping me. Now this clan has a whole lot to do with this video later on when things start to get really interesting but for now I wanted to live a low profile, finish off my cave frame and go out in a few prim roams to try and get some farm. Starting to come together. pretty happy so far with how the layout's come together. It's just going to be three small compartments. If I've done my maths correctly, it's about 60 something rockets to the tool cupboard. So I think it's time we go out and actually shoot people with the crossbow. Watch the grub hunter in his natural habitat. Oh, pretty good, eh? He's 
It's warm up, definitely warm up. That's what I tell myself. That's actually not bad loot for the first kill of the what? Well, that's concerning. That clan's already raiding my upstairs neighbour. I'm going to quickly chuck a 2x1 upstairs so I don't have to keep coming down here all the time. Nice, I imagine I'm going to have to rebuild this thing like seven times over because it's probably going to get raided every night. I swear I checked. Where were they hiding? I had a very unique problem this wipe. My entire video depended on whether my cave survived or not. It was imperative that I found a way to keep it alive at least until it was strong enough that I could defend it in the event of a raid. I went into my old strap book and pulled out a clan diplomacy tactic I had not used in some time. You see these clans love berries early on and I went, scavenged up a bunch of berries, even went to the drone shop and bought a couple clones. My plan was to trade with them and at least keep them happy enough for a few days before they decided to try and raid me. Little did I know that these guys would be responsible for the best ending by a mile I have ever had in any of my videos. I implore you to at least watch till the end on this one. I went around, did a bit more prim PvP and got started on a bit of diplomacy. Yes, my wildest dreams have come true. 840 wood. Oh, nice. Shotgun trap. I actually really need one of them. Oh, jackhammer. That's massive. It has occurred to me though, while out and about, that I do have to do something about this clan. I think I'm going to try and attempt to win them over, to not have them raid me, but at least for a few days. Um, yeah, what seeds do you have for my mate? What if my mate was... What was my mate going to give you for seeds? Ah, bruh. Here, come over here, come, come, here, come here, bro. Legend. Yeah, take this. Do you want to wait for it? Alright, well, it seems that has gone to plan. I am on somewhat good terms with these guys. They're an interesting bunch. There's a lot of them. There's a couple interesting characters in there, though, that like to use words that they shouldn't be bloody using, but I suppose there's always a few runts in the litter. But hopefully, I don't get raided for a while. I would consider my diplomatic mission to be somewhat of a success. I actually didn't know at the time, but my relationship with these guys would deteriorate significantly as the video goes on. I won't spoil too much, but it ends quite spectacularly. For now though, I took the SAR and the ammo, went and researched it down in the cave, ran around the map, found a car, built a car base, and then used my new little trick where I'd drive my car out into the furthest monument into the snow, and I'd farm away in peace. I did get interrupted a bit though doing this, as you're about to find out.
Yes, that's right. While I was out farming, my 2x1 got raided. And I got raided no less by the guys in the big base down in the water. You see the name Cabbage was present when I did my first initial trade. These guys were not going to be as friendly as I first thought they would. I was hoping not to make this relationship deteriorate any further, so I just put this one aside until I had enough to fight back. One thing you might have noticed in that last sequence as well, is that the Arctic research scientists were not shooting back. Every once in a while, serve owners have to disable AI to stop crashing. It's rare, but it had happened this time around, and I was not the only one who noticed this. I built a little one by one rat shack right next to it, loaded up with shotguns, and just started preying on people that were trying to take advantage of the situation. Yes, I'm watching you. This is my audition tape for the next Bond film. Unfortunately, it was over before it started. If you ask me was this worth my while, it really wasn't. I got a few guns out of it and some crumbs, but it was fun nonetheless. I was sitting on a pile of scraps though from this and farming down at harbour. I took it all in my car to the bandit camp to recycle. I also noticed that a clan shop was selling an AK for a few thousand sulphur. And given what had happened earlier with the clan in the water raiding my starter, I was really probably going to need that AK. I got it all back to base and then almost lost it all. Well, it's time to go liquidate all my junk so I can get some BPs for my rocket factory.
luckily, there's a uh, train line that runs just past the rear end of my cave and pretty much all the way to Bandit. So unless someone sets any traps or I don't get hit by a train, I should have pretty easy access to a recycler when I need it. That was definitely worth it. Nice. Don't judge me, I bought wood with scrap. It's impossible to get it at the cave at the moment. Nice. If I can get this down to the cave, we've uh, we've got what we need for the automation electrical side of things. So, pretty keen on it to be honest. Oh my god! No way! Like that might be the quickest flick I've ever done. It was to shut a garage door. Like they're still camping me. It's been ages. Like leave me alone. I had to wait till dark and for it all to quiet down, but at least we've got it in the cave now. Well, with what's been going on upstairs, I am going to research this as quick as possible because we're probably going to need a bunch of them. Well, while we've got the HQM, I'm going to quickly upgrade the front bunker, I think. Um, yeah, I just have a bad feeling, like it's just things are going down, I just feel it. I don't know when, I just feel like this thing's going to get raided. <laughs> what? Speaking of raiding, someone just got tactically nuked. The base was reasonably well fortified now. I had an armoured bunker and two sets of armoured walls before you would even get to the TC. Not to mention a bunch of shotgun traps all over the place and some garage doors. I also though wanted to employ a very advanced defence tactic that involved a cassette player. That being said, we needed to get this automation stuff under the way. So I began to set up the first half of the rocket plant. I wanted a two drop boxes I could drop any ores into that would then just be processed into their raw materials. So I got that set up and put my advanced defense cassette on the wall. You're probably wondering, should I raid this base? The answer is no. I'm a solo role player. There's absolutely nothing in here. And if you knock on the door while I'm online, you might actually get some free stuff. See you later. Oh, I hear someone. You're probably wondering, should I raid this place? The answer is no. I'm a solo role player. There's absolutely nothing in here. And if you knock on the door while I'm online, you might actually get some free stuff. See you later. You're probably wondering, should I raid this place? Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. I just started. I literally just loaded it in to see if the space was, if the cave was free. Don't kill me bro, please. Ah, oh, that's the queen. Because, I mean, I kind of want a cave base, to be honest. Team up. Thoughts? Bit of mic? Yeah. Yeah bro, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you say no to a solo? You, are you a solo? Or yes or no? Okay. Well, um... I mean... I'll get this and that's fine. <laughs> like most sane Ross player. We want a bit of this? A little bit of... That? A bit more of that? Some of this. 
and voila! The Tesla Giga... I'm joking. It just moves metal and sulfur into a box, but, you know. Gotta start somewhere. With that finished, the first half of rocket production was underway. I had two boxes at the entrance to my cave I could fill with metal and sulfur. It would then be picked up, processed in these four furnaces, then moved to another four boxes where it would be stored. It was important. I was going to need a lot of it for what I had planned for this cave. While all this was going on though, there was a lot of stuff going down above my cave. My friendly little neighborhood clan out in the water had made a few more enemies than just me. I went up just to watch the show unfold because it was quite entertaining watching them at least be preoccupied by someone else instead of coming after me. Interesting. It looks like they're getting their farm raided and I don't... It, they look like incense rockets like I'm pretty sure this is a... I think this is a grief raid not a uh, like a profit raid. Wow, there's like six of them, <laughs> like grief raiding these dudes' farm. <laughs> this is what karma looks like, everyone. Yep, that's a uh, grief raider, right? They're just literally putting spikes through the entire farm and blow up all the plots. Um, I'll see if I can grab anything, but I don't like my chances. There's about 15 people here. Uh, that went about as well as I thought it would. There's actually another huge raid going on on the other side of the mountain. I think I'll have a bit better luck at that one because it sounds like there's a lot more people. So I'm going to go try and grab that one. <laughs> that could have been legendary. On that first grub attempt, I didn't really get anything other than satisfaction of watching my clan friends in the water get their farm base griefed. However, on the second grub attempt, I managed to get two AKs. Now this second AK was going to be crucial. I showed a little snippet of it earlier in the video, my new little tactic I used to get scrap, and in the following sequence I'll show you the full thing from start to finish. Essentially, I get a car, go out to the middle of nowhere, and just farm in peace with the scrap tea. I would go back and forth between two monuments, while the other one respawned, and then just stash the loot in the car and drive it back at the end of it all. Now, the clan down in the water, we haven't had a whole lot to do with them yet, but they really, really start to show their true colours, and the story of this video really starts to become apparent.
That little strategy has my tick of approval. I managed to get about 4,500 scrap in a couple of hours of doing that, just driving a car out to the middle of nowhere, killing scientists and hitting barrels. I came across one guy in the whole thing. It was time for me, though, to start looking at some raiding. I went out and farmed up a bunch of sulfur, and while I was at it, I took the stone I got from farming and built some random tower with nothing in it, except for a vending machine so I could sell things. I also wanted to potentially use it as a bit of a bait base. Arctic Research Base had been kicking off though. I was going to go run over and counter it and try get the names of the people doing it because they were likely going to be my first raid target. Well, sounds like there's a few of them. Where's his friends gone? It never ends. I actually uh, almost forgot about this guy, he's what started the whole thing. It's not a bad haul to be honest, a few backup guns, I um, I don't want to risk my AK at Arctic, it's like you're really vulnerable there, and I only have two, so I'm probably going to need them soon, I think. Oh my god, there is no way. Like, I thought I'd seen it all, but this is the first. I've never seen someone try to shotgun through the hard side of a stone wall. He's broken a full shotgun, like... <laughs> Those Rust players, man, they're just a different breed. I was out and about, getting up to no good, trying to find out where these Arctic research guys live. I'd managed to stumble across the Rust shotgun god himself. Something I'm probably never going to see again in my life. When I was out and about though, I did actually come across a few clan bases that were decaying. I wasn't sure if they were decaying because they'd been raided, or they were just decaying in general. It was a very cheap raid cost to get to their core, so I crafted up some expo ammo and ran over to go find out. I needed a break from my area because the clan was on in full force and they were stopping me from doing anything I wanted to do. Alright, here we go. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I don't think, like, I don't reckon I'll get counted. This is pretty remote, but it is rust. You never know. I really, um, I really don't know what I'm going to get here. Like, these types of raids are massive gambles. Like, you really don't know until you're inside the base. Well, to be honest, this one was a complete waste of time. Uh, we'll go to the next one, see if that one's a bit better.
Alright, this was quite a big boat base earlier in the wipe and it is decaying. Uh, all that's left the core, so we'll see what's in this one. Gotta love those big profit raids. Unfortunately for me, those raids were not worth it at all, unless you wanted charcoal, but that was about it. I wanted to try a few more daring raids this wipe, and for that to happen I needed rockets. And we had half of a rocket production facility downstairs in the cave. It was time to finish off that facility, and actually get some rockets to do more raiding. And I kind of wanted to get it out of the way before the guys down the river caught on to the fact I probably wasn't a casual dad game with six kids. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of talking while I make this, just because I'm actually going to have to think for a change. I'm going to put up on the screen the most expertly drawn schematic for this layout, so you can try and copy it if you want, but we'll see how it goes. It might not even work, we don't know. Alright, well, I'll probably skip through a lot of this in the actual video because this has taken me quite some time to make, but if I've done it correctly, I should, in a minute, get a rocket. Oh, there we go! It's, uh, it's working! This is actually pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Good job, base punch. Oh, just look at it. Look how cool it is. It reminds me of like some 1980s steampunk type base, you know. I'm actually proud of this. 100% original. I didn't cheat. I made it all myself, even the schematics. So, we've got rockets now. Time for some fun. Well, I had rockets now and a few AK kits to try some more riskier raids. A bit of time had passed since I had scouted around my area to see who was a potential raid target. Also, a lot of raiding had been going on, so there might not be a whole lot left. I took out a Tommy and AK kit, and went on another roam, just to find the perfect raid target that I could drop about 20 rockets on.
Now I had been on quite the adventure. I found a base I was very interested in raiding. It looked like some sort of scuffed starter base as there was a main base up the hill a bit more from it. If I could raid that starter base before they moved all their loot to their main, it could be juiced up. I definitely did find a base I wasn't going to raid it. It had been a while since I'd seen a 4x4, 4 story high armoured base, but there you go, there's one on the screen. I was going to start this little raiding escapade off with something a bit easy. I was going to hit the base up the hill from me. I was then going to go hit that base out in the snow with a bunch of rockets. I don't think there's going to be much in this one. It's already half rated, but I do want to finish it off. It's cheap. Could be loaded. You never know these days. Well, I mean, it was cheap, and it wasn't exactly a massive profit rate, it was one door, but that HQM is very valuable to me because my cave is very expensive for HQM upkeep. The little easier raid was out of the way now. I was a bit more warmed up, and it was time to go over and try the bigger raid. I was preparing for an online raid. When I scouted them out just before I drove over, their furnace was running, and they were all on, so... I didn't know what to expect when I got there, and I wasn't really too sure on how many of them there were. Wait, what? They're all asleep.
was right, this is like their starter farm base and it's loaded. Looks like they've moved somewhere already, but they still got even stuff here. I really thought I was going into a decent sized online raid there. I had scouted them out to make sure they're online, but I guess just they must have logged off the second I went back to base to get the car. But in hindsight, it was probably a good thing because I found about seven sleepers in that starter base. And if they were all on, it probably would have been quite a tough time. Now I wanted to do another big raid like this, but with actual people online and with some difficulty. But I did actually scout out the raid and I've found a target to hit, but I don't really want to speak about what happens next. I had PTSD over this, but I've left it in because I don't like to fake things and leave things out. Alright, I've got another about 20 rockets, uh, and I want to hit this base. They've got a heli, they're online, they're building it up, so it could be juiced. Are the odds? I've spoken about this before in previous videos. There's a small moment of vulnerability when I'm setting up these raid bases. It's when I run out the back to put the walls up and it just so happened this time around there's an AK room that sees me doing it that isn't even a part of the group I'm raiding. Like, what are the odds? But if you don't risk it, you don't get it. And I don't mind losing 20 rockets, at least trying to pull these things off as a solo because not many people are trying to do this stuff as a solo. If you do want to see me actually pull off a raid, go watch my last video because I use about 50 rockets on the group. And then the online raiding Salty Rust players has about five online raids in it. So they do happen from time to time. I was licking my wounds though. I needed some more farm for some more rockets. So I built a little farm base above my cave so I could get some more teas for farming. But it all goes to crap because my friends in the water are pretty much the rest of this video. Oh, I've just woken up. I logged out last night after setting up that farm base and I got a notification on my Rust Plus that I'm dead. Um, I've logged out on top of my bunker in the cave, so I really don't know what's happened, but I was literally gone for like seven hours. Like, oh, it's frustrating. Like, 
What are the odds? Oh my god. <laughs> I just want to say as well, the guy who killed me is Taco. He lives in the cave. I met him earlier in the video. I can't remember if that wall to the back of the TC was armoured or not, but if it was, they've used about 55 rockets. If it wasn't, it's like 48. Um, they knew exactly which way to go, which is convenient, but whatever. This is just the usual thing for me. What do you think was going through their head when they raided this scene of this, though? Like, they're probably like, what the hell, but... Their raid path is very interesting to say the least, you know, convenient, but whatever. Um, I'm not done yet. I don't quit. I have a set date I end a video and I will we'll be playing to that. Well, at least the car base still exists, but I think my farm's been hit because I don't see a window up there, so they might have used more boom. Yep, wow, there's another 12 rockets done, like, must have been a slow day in the clan scene. Run all the way back to satellite just to go get some fucking stuff to make a torch, because I don't even have a torch on my gun. That was your cave. That your cave. Hey. It was a big raid, bro. That was a really big raid. Well, um, look, I saw that there was like, I don't know, I could hear probably like, like 50 rockets or something, like 40 rockets, easy, bro. Just quickly, I mute my mic in game because I'd probably be demonetized by now. But this guy's trying to pretend like they didn't raid me, but I actually managed to get it out of him. Yeah, true. Yeah, it was very expensive, man. We used a lot of boom. <laughs> nah, it's good. Um, how do you still have a kit on? How do you still have a kit? Nah, bro, we used a lot of rockets, eh? Like, honestly, we came out like three times and went and gave more boom. But, um, my mate knew exactly how to raid your base and he's walking over right now. Oh, yeah? Here he is. Hello. We would have lost to online. That would have been a horrible online. Horrible online. Horrible online. <laughs> trying to get into their base. Man, like honestly god like doesn't matter actually, how many like, rockets it needs raiding that thing would have been so hard now before i let this guy talk any further i just want you to listen to what this guy said when asked by a random earlier in the video this worm guy is a part of the clan as shown in this clip where i killed him tagged up how many are there of you anyways Yes, you heard that correctly. This 15-man WDB clan found a online raid against a solo in a cave would be too difficult. There was a point you could have used one grenade and killed them. Yep, you heard that right. He tried to deny his involvement first, but I eventually got him to admit that he did do the raid. They bragged about how many rockets they used, and then they bragged that they would never online the cave. I accused them of waiting for me to log out. He denied it, but he contradicted himself because he did say that he'd never online the cave. But they've gone down there and raided me, so the only way they'd be able to do that is if they knew I was offline. This was just typical puss behavior by some of the clans on the server I've seen. But I still had a little bit left in that car base, and I wanted to go rebuild to try and annoy these guys. But I stumbled across them, sussing my car base out as well. Wow, I wonder what they could be up to. I'm going to quickly jump in that base and grab all the best stuff and put it in that car. I do have my breakfast here, so I want to eat it, but 
We might be able to get away before they raid it. Ah, oh, surely not. Surely they don't have the boom. <laughs> that was close. That could have been it right there. I had just made it away by the skin of my teeth with the bare minimum I needed to rebuild. Now, I wasn't too sure if these guys were going to come hunt me, but what happens next is even better than what just happened then. I had to do a quick rebuild and get a small base up, but I assure you, this is not over. Alright, I uh, went and cleaned the scraps off my two bases they raided, doors and whatnot. I have seen three cars driving around. I think they're looking for me, so this is going to be fun. In that first big base I built that I just let decay, I actually hid about a box of metal and stone in the external TC. So I could uh, rebuild with if I needed to. And look, it's come in handy. I haven't built anything too amazing, it's just a car base with some storage, like I can't defend this thing in online, it's just so I can uh, try and annoy them. Alright, uh, I'll probably skip over a lot of this in the editing, but I've got this base on its feet now, we've got some farm going on. I kind of want to get like some C4 and try to raid their car base and do annoying things like that, so that's the plan. What's going- this is like the legit middle of nowhere, that's why I put my base out here. Are you kidding me? Oh no! <laughs> that's one of them! <laughs> what are they doing all the way out here? There's surely no way they're looking for me, like... Uh, I think you all know what's gonna happen next. There is no way, it's literally been five minutes and the cavalry's already arrived. Now, son.
this. They got me. They've sealed it shut. I literally have nothing except for a rock and a torch. Wow, what a wipe. I have a new enemy. The last thing I expected to get from this video. The WDB clan. Now, if my maths is correct, and it could be off a bit because I don't remember which walls were armored or not, these guys used somewhere between 60 and 80 rockets on me over 24 hours. And over the entirety of the wipe, they raided six of my bases. It must have been a slow day in the clan scene. And not to mention, a majority of those rockets were used when I was offline. Now, credit where credit's due, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have had a video. But some of the tactics they got up to this wipe were not the best. I will remember these guys, and I don't think it is the last we will ever see them. If I see that tag, and I'm doing a proper video not living in a cave, it's going to be one hell of a video. Watch out for it. Other than that, guys, it's over. They got me. Video's done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. They may have won this battle, but they haven't won the war.